Hello, my name is Dr. Sandra Jan. I'm a clinician and an educator, and I'm absolutely passionate about the use of psychiatric scales and screeners in clinical practice. I'm so glad you joined me today to talk about one of the gold standards in the world of depression, that is the patient health questionnaire, or what we more commonly refer to as the PHQ-9. If you're already using scales and screeners in your practice, Congratulations, I hope you keep up the great work. And if you're new to psychiatric scales and screeners, I hope you find the video very helpful. Let's take a look at the PHQ-9. I believe it's worth repeating that in the world of depression, the PHQ-9 is considered a gold standard. Because so many clinicians and researchers are using the PHQ-9, it really does provide us with a common language in terms of screening and tracking depression. Now, if you're using another depression scale or screener, there's no need to change, but you may want to give the PHQ-9 a try, see what you think. Let's take a look. The PHQ-9 is a brief, nine-question self-report tool. It's very patient-friendly. It only takes about three to five minutes to complete. It's available in many languages, and it's widely accepted across all specialties in mental health. The PHQ-9 not only asks about symptoms, but look at the bottom of the form. You'll see it also asks about impairment. Let's take a closer look. Here we go. The question asks, if you checked off any problems, how difficult had these problems made it for you to do your work, take care of things at home, or get along with people? Not only is this important in terms of helping us make a diagnosis, but also in terms of tracking symptoms. I have some great news for you. Scoring, absolutely simple. Patients are asked, over the last two weeks, how often have you been bothered by any of the following problems? Answer choices include, not at all, several days, more than half the days, and nearly every day. A numerical value is attached to each. Scoring requires that we add up the values and then we refer to the depression severity chart which will help us better understand our patient's depression. You can see scores range from 0 to 27. Very self-explanatory. In my experience, I've found that patients really value this numerical description of their depression. It really does seem to help them appreciate both positive and negative changes. The PHQ-9 has excellent psychometric properties as evidenced by a sensitivity of 88% and specificity also 88%. After years of using the PHQ-9, I want to take a moment and share a few practical tips about incorporating this tool into your clinical practice. Let's start at the top. We'll work our way around. Make sure that you have plenty of copies readily available and sitting in full view. When they're stuck in a file cabinet, sitting on a bookshelf, that seems to be where they stay. If you have a practice website, you may want to provide the form as a PDF download or set it up so patients can fill it out online. You can also provide blank forms to patients at the end of their session and ask them to complete it prior to their next appointment. I have several patients that do this. Now, another easy way to integrate this tool into your practice is to ask patients to fill it out in the waiting room prior to their appointment. The PHQ-9 is a great way to engage patients in a conversation about depression because it provides them with really useful information as well as education. Plus, it can serve to motivate patients to be more watchful of their symptoms because now they know what they're looking for. This is a great resource where you can access copies of the PHQ-9 as well as additional information. I'd encourage you to visit the, the site, spend a little time checking it out. I think you'll be very pleased. Now let's touch on a few more things about the PHQ-9. Screening. As we said before, this is a great screening instrument, but it's also excellent for tracking symptom improvement. For me, as a result of using the PHQ-9, what I've seen is patients begin to really understand their, their scores and use their scores to make sense out of their depression as well as using it to set treatment goals. It's also a great way to engage patients in the treatment process. 
Now, I've seen that they become much more active, engaged participants. PHQ-9 is a great way to improve communication with our colleagues, especially those that are referring patients to us. Because if we're both familiar with the tool, we then share the same language as we're communicating about our patients. And finally, it really is a great source of motivation, not only for my patients, but for me as well. Like we said before, patients begin to incorporate their PHQ-9 score into their language, talking about how they're doing and what they want to accomplish. But I find it motivating as a clinician because I now have a much more concrete way of understanding how my patients are doing. Now, we all remember the old Nike ad campaign from years ago, just do it. Well, that slogan works here too. If you've not used a scale or screener, I'd suggest you make this commitment. Print 10 copies of the PHQ-9, and during the next week, use it with 10 patients. See what you think. Using the PHQ-9 has changed the way I practice and I really do believe it's improved the quality of care I've provided. Thanks for joining me to explore the PHQ-9. I really hope you'll give it a try.